Among all construction methods, inflatable structures feature the lowest weight and have the lowest payload. Therefore, they are ideal for mobile habitats on other planets. Our target is Mars. An inflatable habitat is quickly erected on Mars, but it does not offer any protection from cosmic radiation, micrometeorites, and the cold. A deposit of several meters of loose regolith shields from radiation, mechanical wear, and cold. But this way, none of the useful visible sunlight gets inside either. The new Numo planet habitat solves that problem. Only the ceiling is covered with regolith. The sidewalls are transparent. Embankments shield from radiation coming from the side. Mirror membranes reflect the incoming sunlight vertically on the equator into the habitat where plants produce oxygen and food through photosynthesis. The mirror membranes are curved in order to focus more sunlight from a bigger area into the habitat. The hard particle radiation is not reflected but absorbed into the ground below the mirrors. The mirror membranes can change their position to follow the annual sun declination angle. The inflatable membrane is laid flat on the Martian ground. The protruding roof modules are connected and the Martian regolith is deposed on the membrane. The roof modules are suspended via cables. When the temperature drops to minus 60 degree at night, Martian air is compressed to 10 bar in order to liquefy the contained carbon dioxide. With the remaining air, the membrane is inflated and lifts the regolith deposit until an inner pressure of 250 millibar is reached. The air mixture inside consists mainly of argon and nitrogen with a little bit of oxygen and carbon monoxide. Our soil is brought inside and fertilized, and the toxic percolates are decomposed by bacteria. The remaining carbon monoxide is converted into carbon dioxide. Now plants can grow and produce more oxygen through photosynthesis until a 30% content of oxygen and an inner pressure of 500 millibar is achieved. This is the air pressure on a 4,000 meter high mountain on Earth and compensated by the higher content of oxygen. We will demonstrate the design structure by means of a perspective section. The membrane consists of two layers. The space between these two layers is divided into a grid of airtight cells. If the inner membrane gets punctured, the concerned cell hangs loose. If the outer membrane is punctured, the inner membrane is pushed outwards. This way, it is easy to detect where an air leak is located. The transparent sidewall consists of four layers. The inner two layers are divided into cells as well. The space in between is filled with carbon dioxide to reflect infrared radiation that comes from the inside. A net of parallel Dyneema ropes reinforces the membrane. The pressure from inside the membrane is 50 kN per square meter, which is equal to the weight of 5,000 kilograms on Earth. 
With the ropes, the membrane only needs to withstand the pressure from a small area between the ropes. Dyneema ropes are also spanned across inside to bring the inflated membrane into the right shape. The space between the second and third layer is evacuated. The vacuum prevents heat conduction and heat convection. Since the air pressure is 6 millibar on Mars, only little tensile forces affect the membrane from the outside. The fourth layer is just spanned loosely over the wall and functions as a crust. Once the wear from dust storms and radiation significantly reduces transparency, it can be replaced by a new membrane. At night, mirrored shades are let down to reflect infrared light back to the inside. The partitioning of the inner space is managed by inflatable modular wall elements. In order to save weight, the doors don't consist of rigid frames and wings, but of inflated lips where people can pass through. That kind of door already has been built and tested. Aufblasbare Module werden bei dem Mars Habitat nicht nur für die Außenhülle angewendet werden, sondern auch für Möbel und Trennwände, damit wir die Transportmasse im Raumschiff auch für die Inneneinrichtung minimieren können. Hier haben wir einige aufblasbare Objekte, die ähnlich sind und bereits auf der Erde angewandt werden. Zum Beispiel aufblasbare Fenster oder ein aufblasbares Sitzmöbel, das lediglich ein Kilogramm wiegt und sich im luftleeren Zustand sehr klein verpacken lässt. Ähnlich zu den Trennwänden im Maßhabitat ist zum Beispiel so ein Pranozellelement. Die Pranozellelemente werden jetzt angewendet für mobile Bauten. Es sind Polygone mit jeweils gleicher Kantlänge und die können dann an den Kanten zu verschiedenen Gebäudeformen verbunden, aber auch wieder zerlegt werden. Für dieses Pranozellelement ist transparent, aber die Wandmodule für das Maßhabitat können natürlich auch genauso transluzent oder auch opak in verschiedenen beliebigen Farben produziert werden. Für das Maßhabitat bedeutet das, dass wir nicht nur bei den Trendwänden sehr viel Gewicht einsparen, sondern dass die Bewohner auch sehr schnell die Wände selbst installieren und wieder wegnehmen können. Denn es gibt hier am Rand Reißverschlüsse und diese Reißverschlüsse haben ein Pendant jeweils an der Gebäudehülle, wo sie in einem Raster angebracht werden und so kann ich innerhalb des Rasters beliebig diese Trennwände einzippen, aufblasen oder auch wieder anderweitig versetzen. Most of the so far published and awarded concepts for mass habitats are based on 3D printing. But I think it's the wrong way because 3D printing, all the effort simply is not necessary. It's good for like small items like door hinges or door handles, but not for big supporting walls and ceiling. You have to imagine that on Mars the air pressure is very, very low less than 1% on Earth. So the inner pressure in the habitat, which is sufficient for breathable air, would be that strong, it would push with a force according to 10 metric tons on one square meter on here on Earth gravity. That's the force that pressures on the membrane. So it would be strong enough to easily support an eight to nine meter high deposit of loose mass regolith. And the loose mass regolith uh, even provides a much better protection from radiation and micrometeorites uh, than a thick wall. And of course it doesn't need all the technical effort, the risks and especially the energy to produce and 3D plane from the regolith. You have to imagine um, to produce one kilogram of rock wool you need 4.2 kilowatt hours. And to provide 
a wall with enough protection from radiation, it should have about 3,000 kilograms per square meter. So you need 12,600 kilowatt hours per one square meter of wall. So my habitat concept, like a module with 750 square meters, only has a payload of 3,000 kilograms. But to produce a 3D printed habitat of the same size, you would need three cylinders with 10 meters of diameter and 15 meter of height for five levels. And that would result in a surface area of three times 500, 560 square meters. So the total energy to produce this wall structure would be about 21,000 megawatt hours. Okay, and to provide that energy, you need 100 kilopower reactors from the other, where each of them weights 1,500 kilograms, and they would need 880 days to 3D print that habitat. So. Well, to produce the electric energy for LED light, we have only two options. One is photovoltaic, the other one is a nuclear power plant. With photovoltaic power plant, their efficiency only would be 10%. When I use direct sunlight by mirror membranes, then even through the losses through the mirror and the three layers of membrane, we still would get 75% of all sunlight inside for the photosynthesis of the plants and to heat up the habitat. So it's clear that the efficiency is much better with the direct sunlight and it's a more reliable source of energy. Also, when we compare the payload, it speaks for the direct sunlight. One square meter of photovoltaic panels weighed at least five kilograms while one square meter of mirror membrane only weights 0.5 kilograms and produces 7.5 times more energy. The other option, nuclear power, the best kilopower reactors by NASA now produce 10 kilowatts of electric energy. So that means 240 kilowatt hours per day. For the same amount of energy, I, can, I need 100 square meter of mirror membrane. But while the kilopower reactor weights 1,500 kilograms, the mirror membrane only weights 50 kilograms. Still, on Mars, we would use all three sources of energy because we need a redundant energy supply. So if one energy source fails, we still have the other one or two options. In addition to the presented living space and greenhouse units, we also provide airlocks, large halls, toroidal connecting modules, and tubes as passageways as they form complete villages. Each unit is accessible from inside and outside via airlocks. In case a unit is damaged, it can be disconnected from the other units, which remain accessible and operational. In order to make optimal use of sunlight throughout the day, the greenhouse units are oriented from east to west. Each traffic way consists of two parallel twin tunnels. In case a tunnel element is damaged, the traffic is redirected to the other tunnel. The damaged tunnel can be repaired without blocking the traffic. The inflatable structure of the large convention halls is covered with 4 to 5 meters of regolith. A net of Dyneema ropes additionally reinforces the structure and gives it the right form. The inner air pressure forms the membrane into a geometry analogous to a medieval cross vault, but with inverse direction of forces. Unlike solid structures, where all forces are directed into the building material as compressive forces, on the inflatable structure, everything is converted to tensile forces into the membrane and the ropes. The 
legs are more efficient than wheels in sand and over rocks. The mass of the integrated batteries in the roof shields from radiation and micrometeorites. Like how insects walk, three legs are always on the ground at once. This provides a safe stand under any conditions and a smooth ride with little vibrations for the passengers. This is the plan. Get your ass to Mars. Get your ass to Mars.